Hello guys, what is going on? It is Matt here from the MC Spectrum and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. So my first games console was a PlayStation 2. I played this a lot, got quite a few games for it, got quite into using it. It was a good console, it ran well for the time. But after this I wanted an Xbox because I saw there was really cool games on there, for example Halo. Loved Halo, first game I got on the new Xbox. That was an Xbox 360. And I liked playing on this. I enjoyed playing on the Xbox. Overall, I probably enjoyed the Xbox experience more than I did the PlayStation. Of course, there was something that maybe I wanted to get the PlayStation 4. Something told me that I did. Little Big Planet always looked fascinating to me. But I couldn't play it because I had an Xbox and I didn't want to go around buying two consoles. It's a lot of money. But of course, Xbox was still fun and it's a good console. So what I want to know is for these next generation consoles, which is going to be better? Xbox One or PlayStation 4? Both are looking pretty fantastic, both all run games equally as well as each other. But will there be one slightly better than the other? That's what I'm here to research right now. Okay, so let me begin with the games. First off, we know Xbox will obviously receive Halo because Halo is obviously bought into by Microsoft. It's one of their special games, one that they own as a company. Personally, I love the Halo franchise, so that would make me want to go for an Xbox One. Also, they've got other games which appeal to a large audience, for example, Minecraft. That's played obviously a lot on the PC and it's also been released now on Xbox, but not for PlayStation. So another reason a lot of people might want to go for it. Also to be released is Forza 5, Project Spark and Rise Son of Rome. All looking pretty cool, hey? But then again, there is the PS4 which has got some really cool looking exclusives also. What it looks like to me is that PlayStation 4 is going for a lot of these really popular free-to-play PC games. It's taking up Blacklight Retribution, it's taking up Don't Starve, it's not a free one, but a cool PC game nonetheless. Also Planetside 2 and Warframe. So personally, if I was going on exclusive games, I'd go for Xbox One hands down. Halo is a fantastic game and should be loved by every person that plays it. Really good, I would recommend it, and Xbox is the one to provide it, so winner in that respect. However much the games are good, the hard drive in these consoles is what's going to count. How well are we going to be able to play the games? Now, they should run reasonably well on both of them. They should run similar to each other as the games are developed for one purpose. They're developed around the same idea of the console, not like a PC, it can't quite run the same. But the PS4 should get a few more higher frames for a few reasons, mostly because the hard drive is a bit better, you know. Both consoles are using AMD processors which are 8 core. The one that the PlayStation 4 is using is a custom-made AMD processor, whilst the Xbox One is the AMD Radeon, but it is a small variant of this, so we have a rough idea of how that Xbox One's processor will perform. The Radeon does one run particularly well, and um, we know it should hopefully work quite well, and if PlayStation 4 is running similarly, it should run equally to this. Both next generation consoles will be running on similar hard drives, both 500 gig. Also, they will both have Blu-ray inputs for your DVDs, etc. Both will be running the new and up-to-date USB 3 module inside their consoles. However, one fundamental difference between the two consoles is the RAM, which is very important inside a games console. The RAM inside the Xbox is still 8GB and while similar to the PlayStation 4's it's running a slightly older model and a slightly slower model. The PlayStation 4 is running a GDDR5 model, whilst the Xbox One is running DDR3, a slower variant. So performance wise, this could give you a few more frames and as well as perhaps performing other tasks on the side, it's going to help. RAM is very important inside any games, console or computer. The Xbox One will be having 7.1 surround sound which is particularly useful for a game as you can hear footsteps clearly and pinpoint where they are. However with a console I don't know how beneficial this will be as most people 
don't really plug headsets in supportive of 7.1 surround sound they like to have it coming out of their tv speakers which kind of makes the idea redundant but still for those using a headset it is going to work particularly well nonetheless the gpus inside of these games consoles are both running amd graphics cards the graphics card being used inside the playstation 4 is a semi-custom AMD Radeon GPU integrated to an APU. However, the Xbox One's is an AMD Radeon var variant, sorry, no. again, much like their CPU. Okay, so what it looks like from this graphics card is that the PlayStations will run a slight bit better than the Xbox One's, which is very good and could give you a few more frames over the Xbox One. But, of course, as the games are mostly designed around Xbox One just to be compatible with both, it won't make too much of a difference. So taking everything into account, being both an Xbox fan and a previous PlayStation user, I think the PlayStation 4 is going to get my vote. I think that for you and every other gamer out there, the PlayStation 4 will offer more for you. The PlayStation is well designed and a lot cheaper than the Xbox One. The Xbox One is being released at $499 in US, whilst the PlayStation 4 is being released for $399. How much of a better spend of £100 could you get whilst buying this PS4? You could buy this headset that you might need, you could buy a week's food for, for example, <laughs> anything you need. For the UK it's going to cost $349 for the PlayStation 4, and for the Xbox One, £429. I'm not here to tell you which console I think you should get, I'm just here to recommend what I think would be more suitable for every gamer out there. Xbox obviously does have its strong points, for example Halo is a huge strong point and something that I would miss if I was going to get this PlayStation. However, PlayStation is fantastic, it's running a it's running better than the Xbox One. And also there's this added bonus of getting exclusives from Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 3 a week earlier than any other platform like PC and Xbox. Perhaps you're just a big Sony fan, perhaps you're just a big Microsoft fan. Whatever, I'm, I'm not telling you you need to get either. Both companies are providing good material here. Something that you should be buying no matter what type it is. But it is down to personal preference at the end of the day. You might be a huge Sony fan, you might be a huge Microsoft fan. Personally, I don't have too much preference myself. I'm a big user of Microsoft things. Not too huge of Sony, but of course they do make good stuff. So I leave you pondering which would be better. Let me know which one you think is better for whatever reason it might be in the comments section down below. And yeah, until next time guys, my name has been Matt from the MC Spectrum. Be sure to like, favourite and subscribe to mine and Sam's channel for every other gaming update that you require. And until next time guys, I'll see you later.